Well, good morning. It's still morning. I'm Keith Cole, CEO of Waterlens, and we take the chemist out of chemistry by making complex chemistry simple for the average user. We've developed a test that does fast, accurate, dirt simple way to test water quality on location in a matter of minutes. And I've got to give you a warning, this talk has been stamped as for mature audiences only by South by Southwest. So Bart, you may have to leave, actually. Um, because I'm going to use a four-letter word that begins with F a lot today. And some of you may find it offensive, and the word is frack. So stay with me here as we go through how Waterlens is going to change the oil and gas industry. And we'll do the same for other high water volume using industries as well. We've come a long way in the oil and gas industry from Jed Clampett shooting at food and accidentally discovering oil and gas. Now we hydraulically fracture wells with millions of gallons of fresh water miles deep in the earth and horizontally drill through shale. It has been an energy boom though that has saved the country and the consumers billions of dollars, $250 billion a year from lower prices. So what's all the fuss about? Well, generally it's about the effect on drinking water quality. But at the end of the day, the EPA this summer has come out with a study that said hydraulic fracturing had no widespread impact on drinking water quality. Now, what's the problem? What, what happens from that? We've got 70 to 120 billion gallons of fresh water typically used to fracture wells in the US each and every year. And the problem with that water is it's very nasty and complex. So when it comes out of the ground, you don't reuse that water, you actually put it back down another well, believe it or not, and dispose of it forever, never to be seen again. Thankfully, the industry has started to recycle and reuse water. They do so with a lot of different technologies, but at the end of the day, you have to know what's in the water in order to properly reuse it so you can balance out your chemicals. If you don't, you will scale the well up, limit the, formation, limit the production of oil and gas, and actually end up spending more money and more chemicals downhole to fix the water problems you've created. So how would you test the water since it's so important? Traditionally, they ship water to labs. You heard Mark talk about it. They go to outside labs and spend millions of dollars a year shipping water around. By the time you get the answer, it's too late. You've already fracked that well. You've already put the water down there. Testing methods, legacy field methods like this one, same thing. They're complicated, error prone, hard to use on site. They were not designed for complicated oil and gas waters. Waterlens is designed for that. It's a very simple test to use. All you do, our chemistry is freeze dried into these trays. You put the water in the tray, and in about 10 minutes, you have a complete water analysis for 15 chemicals and counting, 15 contaminants and counting that you need to measure water quality. And this is so simple, my 8-year-old and 12-year-old daughter can do it. So it's very, very simple to use, and most oil field guys can handle it as well. Now, at the end of the day, though, it's, it's uh, about revenue. So we have a razor razor blade model here. These are single use. We have an all-star team of chemists and super molecular analytical PhDs that help us with the chemistry. And I think the best way to remember water lens is to think of us this way. We're bringing the power of a full-scale lab to places like this, and soon to places like this in agriculture, pulp, pulp and paper, power generation, and livestock. Thank you. So Keith, aside, aside from TDS, are all of the analytes colorimetric? Yeah, almost all of our tests are colorimetric based. There are a couple that are precipitation based. Do you have any early partners or uh, pilot testing situations? Yeah, we've had a lot. Uh, we've got lots of customers starting to use our product. We just became commercial in about the last six months and started to get sales going from there. We have several pilots with major independent operators in the United States, as well as working on some pilots with some companies outside of oil and gas, power generation, agriculture, things like that. And maybe I missed this. Are you selling the product or selling the service? Yeah, this is actually a product. The idea is it's so easy to use. You don't need my guys out there or a chemist or a PhD. Anyone in this room, and again, even my daughters, can do this test, so most of all guys should be able to pick it up pretty quickly. What about disposal concerns after the tests? Of the so test there's nothing material? toxic in our test, but, but because it is a plastic-based tray that's used all over the biotech world, that we can collect those and recycle those. So I'm clearly not a water tech expert, uh, but I know a lot of the buzz around frack water and some of the concerns around benzene, arsenic, lead. Can you test for those as well? We're not there yet. That's the kind of technology that we hope to get to one day. I know that Mark's working on similar things, the more the toxic ones. Our focus right now has been how do you improve the operational use so they can use recycled water, but that still get the same production or actually better production than they got before using fresh water, limit the impact on freshwater resources, and eventually our chemistry should be able to move to those types of tests, but at this point our focus is inorganic. Keith, have you considered something like a strategic alliance with a hawk versus going it on your own? Uh, we haven't too much uh, focused on hawk. Again, sort of similar to Mark, I guess, is that we focus on laboratories. How do you get lab quality results? And the hawk tests are fine, and there's lots of companies that do the same tests. 
with a trained chemist in a controlled environment, they do okay, right? But for complex, nasty waters like oil field, paper mills, food processing, they have their problems, interferences, techn technical problems with the user trying to do the test, lots of steps. Ours takes 10 minutes, 15 parameters. Uh, it's very simple, quick and easy. And we screen for interferences and we, we manage around those so you get actually lab quality results. So, but we'd love to work with them, we just haven't gotten the opportunity. Have you thought at all about the home market? I just bought a house and I literally had to put pieces of paper in the water and send it to a lab and pay $30. Yeah, we hope to get there one day as we shrink our form factor down from a 96 well plate tray format to something that's more economical and, and compact. Something eventually you can actually put in, oh, I left my phone there, but basically plug into the bottom of your phone like a square credit card reader and do water analytics that way. At that point, it becomes more cost effective for home users. And we do have a plan for that. How big is the water analytics market overall? For oil and gas, it, we've estimated it to be at least a billion dollars, if not more. And that's just oil and gas for fracking and recycling of water. There's drilling fluids, cements. I mean, you can go on and on into all sorts of industries. So it's multi, multi-billion. Got that time? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much.